Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 25th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Kuna Country, we did it, baby. Okay, my friends. <laughs> it was an incredible rally yesterday uh, in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. I got to tell you, my friends, I want to thank all of you, all of you. I know you battled traffic, uh, congestion. It was difficult. It's in the middle of the day. Uh, but some, you, you made it. So many of you came and I cannot thank you enough for coming yesterday from the bottom of my heart. Uh, it was a smashing success. My friends, let me tell you right now, Judge Feely is in big, big trouble. The momentum now to remove him from the bench is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I think the spark that maybe now will lit light the tinderbox that will finally blow this guy off the bench was what happened yesterday at that rally. The moment I arrived late, as everybody who was there knows, uh, about, what was it, Brittany, 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, we got snarled in traffic as well. And, by the way, getting to Salem, that's no joke. I, I, it's not easy getting to Salem, okay? But, but let that go. Let that go. And uh, we, when I came at about 4.25, 4.30, whenever I finally arrived, when I saw that many people there, I started to pump my fists because I knew right away, right away, that the mainstream media would be forced to cover the judge, would be forced to cover the rally, would be forced to cover the scandal. They just could not sweep this under the rug. There were just simply too many people. And so with the helicopters hovering above us, uh, with police officers secretly under their breath telling me, go get him, Jeff. Go get him, Jeff. There we were. Jeff Deal was there. State Representative Jim Lyons was there. Jim McMahon, who's running against Maura Healy, was there. Uh, Rich Baker, who's running for the Governor's Council, was there. And to me, the person that in many ways stole the show, Lucy Kohler, was there. And I got to tell you, my friends, we brought the house down. We sent a message right there at the courthouse where Judge Feely does his dirty work every day that now he's been put on notice. Cooner Country has put him on notice. And um, Channel 5, I know Channel 5 covered it. Channel 25 covered it. Channel 10 covered it. I'll get to them in a second. I, I know Channel 7 had a truck there. I was told by people. I did not see any coverage, maybe on their website, yes. But in terms of their television coverage, um, you know, for the news hour. Oh, it was on at 6 o'clock. Yeah, we were still there at 6, but okay. they had it on at 6. All right, it's on their website. Yeah, at their 10 o'clock newscast, they didn't cover it. But at their 6 o'clock, they did. Okay, so 7 covered it. Basically, most of the mainstream media were forced to cover the issue. I know that WBZ Radio did a phenomenal job. They had covered it, and they were discussing it uh, regularly around the hour. Let me just say this, because I want to be fair. When they're wrong, I criticize them, but when they do something good or they're right, I want to praise them. I thought Channel 5 did a remarkable job with their coverage. I thought it was honest, it was fair, it was objective, it was balanced, it was factual. Uh, I thought they covered the rally extremely well. I'll be honest with you, Feely looked horrible. They presented him in a very bad light, as they should. Uh, Channel 25 as well, I thought did an extremely good job. Seven, I cannot comment on because I was at the rally, so I couldn't see their reportage. Oh, seven had the Charlie Baker cut. Okay, good. Okay, so seven, seven did a good job then. I mean, from what, you know, what I'm hearing from Brittany. Let me tell you who I think is absolutely despicable. And I'm, I'm talking about Channel 10, NBC News, NBC, MSNBC, the far left. They were there and it was disgusting. Now, 
I can only speak for the 10 o'clock newscast. That's the one, or no, sorry, the 11 o'clock newscast. Forgive me. That was the one that I saw, the 11 o'clock newscast, that package. What NBC News did, local Channel 10 NBC reporter, I don't know who this reporter is, but he should be ashamed of himself. What these, what these reporters were trying to do from NBC, they went to the Salem Superior Courthouse and they were interviewing sleazy shyster defense lawyers, criminal defense lawyers who have cases in front of Judge Feely. In other words, that's where their bread is buttered. And so they literally, this is how they came in with their, with their newscast. They come in with, should Judge Feely go? Controversial judge, huge rally. Many say, not so fast. And boom, they gave about 10 seconds to the rally. I believe they interviewed one person who went to the rally, basically just saying, you know, he should go. Why? They don't even really explain. And then boom, right away, there's a shyster criminal defense lawyer who's going on for, what, 30, 40 seconds. How dare you just take a few cases out of context and not look at the larger pattern of this great judge? And by criticizing this judge, this is an assault on the independent judiciary. Ah, oh. <laughs> I'm a moon bat. I think I'm so smart. <laughs> and I'm, I swear, I'm looking at this and I'm like, are you kidding me? Why don't you find a member of the Salem community? Why don't you find a man? Why don't you interview some of the staffers who work in the Salem courthouse? Why don't you interview some of the cops? They were everywhere and ask them whether anybody wants to defend Judge Feely. No, they find a few shyster criminal defense lawyers who have cases pending in front of them. Clear conflict of interest. They want to ingratiate themselves with the judge. Oh, he's a great judge. How dare you criticize him? So, according to NBC News, I'm not going to let him get away with this. According to NBC News Channel 10, is now on the record as defending Judge Feely. So, the question I have for NBC 10, uh, NBC News 10, and for these shyster criminal defense lawyers, and all the moon bats now that are defending Judge Feely. Very simple. Very simple. This is an attack on the independent judiciary? Right. Judges now are above criticism? Are you now telling me that it is verboten to criticize or call out a judge for outrageous, disgusting, evil rulings? What are they now? God? No, I'm sorry. You can criticize God. So, no. no. What are they now? Allah? What are they now? The Prophet Muhammad? What are they now? It's blasphemous? To criticize a sleazy, crooked, corrupt judge? I mean, I want you to think about how insane these moon bats are. So people can't protest in front of a courthouse when he's letting loose notorious heroin dealers? When he's letting loose child molesters? When he's letting loose cop killers? When he's letting loose gangsters and armed burglars? So... If we criticize them, that's an attack on the independent judiciary. So they're above what is judicial supremacy now? Basically, what do we live now in a in a in a in a fundamentalist liberal state? Judges now are can't be criticized. They're 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 Allah. They're the Prophet Muhammad. This is insane. And in most other states in the union, judges at the local level like this are elected. They're routinely criticized. They're routinely held accountable. But they're saying in Massachusetts, the People's Republic of Massachusetts, no, 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 no. You can't hold judges accountable, God forbid. Because you see, I got a local heroin dealer. I got, I got a child molester who's going in front of Judge Feely. I don't want to hurt his feelings. Don't criticize. Hey, don't criticize him because he's going to get my client off. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Only in the People's Republic of Mark Massachusetts. My friends, let me just say this. Again, I want to thank all of you for coming. I believe it is a political, cultural watershed. 
Uh, even the police officers told me, they go, Jeff, we've never seen any kind of a rally like this in front of a Salem Superior Courthouse. They, they told me that right away. These judges are never held accountable like this. They're never publicly, um, publicly named and shamed like this. And we have now put not just Judge Feely on notice, but many of these other arrogant, out-of-control judges on notice that from now on, we're going to be watching them. You know, the ancient Greeks asked, who guards the guardians? Who watches the watchmen? We do. And because of the success of our rally, and that's why I can't thank all of you enough for all of your support and for all of your prayers, now, five, seven, I don't care how bad their coverage was, 10, 25, they were forced to cover the issue. And because the mainstream media, although the Globe refused to touch it, the Boston Herald refused to touch it. But let that go. Let that go. Because they're trying to blacklist me. But let that go. I don't care. Because of that rally and the pressure now that we are putting on Feely, for the first time, Governor Baker has had to take a public position on the issue. Here is now what, jo what Charlie Faker, the governor, we moved him to have to actually call out Judge Feely. Here is now Baker's response, thanks to the rally. Roll it, Brittany. I think Judge Feely's decision was ridiculous and an outrage. For Charlie Faker, you don't get harsher words from him. That it was ridiculous and an outrage. That for him, woohoo, that's Charlie giving it to him with both barrels. So, if it was so outrageous, and of course I agree, and it was so despicable, I agree, and so ridiculous, I agree, the obvious question, should Feely be impeached? There's a bill right now getting co-sponsors in the state legislature that would remove Feely from office. Will Baker support and sign the bill? Should Feely be impeached? What's Charlie's answer? Roll it, Brittany. This criminal did not have an addiction. He was simply dealing death to make money. And I think for Judge Feely to, um, to blow that off and to let him go was a terrible decision will you remove him i think look the the courts need to take a look at this stuff uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh will i remove him uh uh let me let me punt let me uh he's like mumbles now uh but let uh the uh, the courts uh the courts they gotta police themselves all the hacks they gotta police themselves and uh let me look let me hold on hold on let me put my finger to my tongue in my mouth let me how's the wind blowing Pretty strong against Feely, but not hurricane size winds yet. Let me keep my finger up. Uh, don't like him. A bad decision. Outrageous. Let the courts handle it. If the pressure continues to build, my finger, um, gotta keep it up. Gotta keep it up in the wind. Keep it up. I'll remove him. So what's going on here now is it's Hakarama. He now wants to claim the courts should take care of it. They won't. They won't. Obviously, they won't. They won't police their own. Because I'll tell you why. There are tons of Judge Feelys uh, through, rampant throughout our judicial system. And they know that if he goes, then somebody else may go. So now Baker is, we forced him to condemn him on the record. Now he wants to punt. Let's not give him a chance to breathe. Let's keep the pressure on. He will be forced to have to agree that Feely must be removed from office. And then, for the first time, the liberal Hakarama, will, we will have cut them. For the first time, the liberal hacks will bleed. And that will be the beginning of a populist revolution. My friends, we are the tip of the spear. And yesterday was the opening shot of a populist revolution that is going to take back our streets, take back our communities, take back our courts, take back our state, and yes, take back our country. Were you at the rally? What do you make of the media coverage of the rally? And is Judge Feely's days, are they numbered? Your calls, next.
Okay, my friends, now I want you to know, I want to be very candid with all of you. Um, the liberal establishment was clearly rocked by yesterday's rally. There is no question about it. Um, and I know over the last mm, 12 hours, uh, they first tried to blacklist me. Now they're trying to go after me and they're sending their moles out. That's what they do. Listen now to this text from 617. Jeff, they're trying to defend the NBC News coverage of getting these criminal defense lawyers who have cases in front of Feely, the only ones that they're def that the only ones that were willing to go on camera to defend Feely. So now they're listen to this now. So now they're saying, well, what else did you want NBC News to do? I said, talk to court staffers. Talk to law enforcement officials. Talk to people in the community. Nobody will defend this out-of-control judge. The only people that will are the shyster lawyers whose who's, uh, this, this judge is letting their criminals, uh, uh, their clients, walk the streets free. Listen now to this text, because that's the liberals now are afraid. Because we're starting now to rock the epicenter of their power, which is the liberal hackerama in the judicial system. Jeff, do you really think court staffers and police officers are going to speak to a TV reporter? I guess you did not learn that at the Mooney Times. The Washington Times, I think, is still owned. I was when I was there by the Unification Church. The libs would always call it the Mooney Times. Didn't matter how good the reporting was, how accurate the stories were. It's a way to try to dis disparage not just me, but everybody else who worked there. So this is now what they're doing. Okay, for the record, the Boston Herald had a piece three days ago on Lucy Kohler, the captain of the Salem Police Force, Presnewski is his last name, okay, openly condemned Feely's decision, openly, to release Soto Vettini, saying that he is personally responsible for the deaths of numerous people overdosing in Salem. So, Police officers have publicly gone on the record, in, this time to the Boston Herald, in print, in print, with their name, condemning Feely. So, yes, and there are other officers who I've spoken to who are more than willing to go public to condemn Feely. No police officer can stand this guy. That's number one. As for court staffers, not only did the prosecutor in the case say this decision was utterly outrageous, but listen to this. This, I believe, is from the Salem News. Now, almost all of the prosecutors in the Salem court system have now come out and demanded that Feely step down from the bench. So not only are court staffers willing to speak out against this judge, they are now openly calling for him to be removed or to resign from the bench. So you may talk Mooney Times all you want. It's called decent objective reporting. Staffers are on the record. Police officers are on the record. Almost everybody in that community is on the record. The only ones they could find are the shyster lawyers who are making money off the deaths of people on the streets. That's NBC News for you. 617-266-6868. Okay, lines are loaded. Casey in Townsend, you're up next. Go ahead, Casey. Hey, Jeff, nice job yesterday. I went to the rally, um, and you did a fantastic, phenomenal job. Uh, I'm a courier, Jeff, and I get paid by the mile. The last place a courier wants to get, go to... Getting paid by the mile is downtown Salem. It's impossible to get there in any good time. And to get that many people out, my hat's off to you, Jeff. Fantastic job. And also, I'd like to say, the Great Awakening is starting to happen, Jeff. It's not just in Massachusetts. It's all over the country. People are waking up. And, 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 and it's not just a Great Awakening with a Q. And I, I don't know if you're familiar with that movement, but it's a populist movement and a combination of both of those movements. People are waking up. And we're going to take the country back, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Casey. Uh, thank you so much for being there. I really appreciate it. The other thing they're trying to do, and I don't know why they're doing this. I mean, the, the, the pictures show they're lying. They did it. Remember we had that big illegal immigration rally? And we had clearly at least five, if not 10,000 people up at the Boston Common. They were claiming a few hundred people showed up. Well... Again, they kept saying, well, you know, 100 showed up, 200 showed up. I'm like, at 4.30 when we began speaking, you didn't see all the people there? Like, they keep trying to downplay the numbers. 
you know, everything to try to diminish or marginalize us. But it doesn't matter. Look, if it was such a small rally, why did all of you cover it? I, I, you know, because it's obvious. There's a groundswell of opposition now growing, not just to Feely, but to the out-of-control liberal judges in this state. Cooner country, they can lie till they're blue in the face. They cannot stop us. 617-266-6868. Larry in Belmont. You're up next. Go ahead, Larry. Jeff, I got to say it was an honor to get up there and stand by your side at that rally yesterday. And... I got to say, I didn't see Channel 25 last night, but I was disappointed, but not surprised this morning. First, they were showing aerial shots of when the crowd was just forming. It seemed like they're deliberately showing low numbers. Yes. They didn't show the rally at all. They didn't show you speaking or any of the people speaking, the guest speakers. They shot right to uh, Governor Faker for his opinion on it, where he was capitulating in Hemmen and Hahn and stuff. And it was... It was ridiculous. They were trying, you know, they're just trying to sh- downplay the importance of yesterday. It's not going to work, Larry. Oh, uh, no, it's not, but it's still pathetic. Oh, I agree with you, Larry. I completely agree with you. But look, here's what we did, all right? We got the mainstream media now to cover it. We got the governor now, finally, we moved him on record to denounce the judge and his decision. We now have, there are more, correspond- more, more co-sponsors uh, to this bill that's been pushing, uh, pushed by Jim Lyons and Jeff Deal. It is gaining support now almost by the hour. So the momentum now is inexorable. Larry, this judge is undefendable. And the only what? thing now, I said this to Brittany, I'm going to say to you openly, if I were the Democrats... It's up to them. I'm not going to tell them how to run their mafia state. If I were them, I would send this guy off to Florida. Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, I am getting people who are calling me and emailing me. These are incredible allegations. They are telling me that this judge is on the take. And they're giving me specific examples and specific cases. I don't want to talk about them until I verify all these cases and do my own investigative reporting. But if what they're saying is true, and I underline the word if... This thing is going to continue and continue. You don't just now have a moon bad judge. You may have a judge that's taken money. And if they want to take this that far, if, if this guy goes down and he goes down for taking money, people are going to say how many other judges are on the take. So if I were them, I would cut this guy loose right now. So I want to see where is Bob DeLeo? Where is Bob DeLeo? Where is Maura Healy? Where is Elizabeth Warren? Why will they not condemn this judge? We've got him by the tonsils. All we've got to do now is squeeze. And Larry, I cannot thank you enough for coming. Because none of this could have been possible without you and Cooner Country. I appreciate that, Jeff. But really quick, if for all your fans and all your listeners who couldn't make it last night, they need to go to change.org and sign the petition to get rid of this guy. Our voices can be heard. You proved that yesterday. We need to continue proving that every day. Thank you so much, Larry. God bless you, my friend. We're going to have Jeff Deal on in five minutes. He'll talk, talk to us about he was there with me at the rally. I promise we'll continue to take your calls. Very quickly, a text. I just want to, because I don't want to alienate anybody. Jeff, why wasn't Dr. Lively at the rally? Scott Lively would have been a great opportunity to stick it into Charlie Baker, Charlie Faker. He's off to California. He's, I think, going to be in California for three weeks. That's why he couldn't make it. Okay, uh, we'll continue to take your calls. Another school shooting. Oh, my God. This time in Indiana, WRKO's Bill Trafiro has the latest from the newsroom. Bill, what are the details? Thank you, Jeff. 1237 here on the great WRKO. Okay, I promise to take more of your calls. But first, the man of the hour. He was with me yesterday, shoulder to shoulder. The first public official in Massachusetts to publicly condemn and demand the removal of Judge Timothy Feely. He is co-sponsoring legislation along with State Representative Jim Lyons, and there are others, I don't want to leave the others out, uh, that's now making its way through the State House uh, to demand that the House vote to remove Feely, none other than State Representative Jeff 
uh, Jeff Deal, the real deal, who is also, I believe, going to be the Republican nominee in September to challenge Elizabeth Warren for the U.S. Senate. Jeff, you did an incredible job yesterday. You were absolutely on fire. And I want to ask you this. After our rally, because there was so much public pressure, they finally asked Baker what his, his thoughts were on Feely and his decision. He called it outrageous and ridiculous, but then when asked about impeaching the judge, Baker said this. Roll it, Brittany. Will you remove him? I think, look, the, the courts need to take a look at this stuff. Should the courts take care of this, Jeff, or is this something for the legislature and the governor to take up? Yeah, I think the general court should take it up, which is the House and Senate, which is why Jim Lyons and myself and several others have filed uh, a bill uh, that would basically create a petition that if we pass it in the House, pass it in the Senate, it goes to the governor's council and then goes to the governor. We can impeach him. There is a process. That's the court that we should be doing. But the court of public opinion is important as well. And that's why yesterday when we were out there with that rally, we showed that the people of Massachusetts, hundreds and hundreds of them, as you know, bringing pictures of their daughters, their sons that were lost to drug addiction because criminals that were let out back on the street by Judge Tim Feely were uh, not prosecuted, and that's the problem. He is protecting criminals, and he must go. He must be impeached, and if he doesn't uh, get impeached, the other thing is let's make sure he resigns. I mean, we, we've got to put public pressure on him like uh, no other because this is finally the line in the sand. We can't have drug dealers being put out on the streets, killing our husbands, our wives, our sons, our daughters, you know, people's sisters, their brothers. We have to send a message that we're not going to tolerate this anymore. And, by the way, law enforcement officers who were there, and thank them for protecting the crowd, law enforcement officers, they're doing their job every day to get these people off the street, get the drugs off the street. They're putting their lives on the line. I mean, I went out with a gang unit and watched them doing undercover buys. They get in the car with people with guns, with drugs, and they put their lives on the line to arrest these people. And then you have a judge like Tim Feely who lets this guy go, a career drug dealer, and says he's just trying to earn money to feed his family. He is killing people in the community. The community wanted him arrested, and this judge put him back on the street. It's a crime, what he's doing, and that's why we have to get him impeached. Jeff, where is Elizabeth Warren? Where is the chief? Why will she not publicly condemn Feely? You have, she won't. Why is she coddling and protecting this out-of-control, in many ways almost demented, unhinged liberal judge? Well, I mean, first of all, I don't know where she is. She's been in uh, other states, uh, swing states like Ohio, recently stumping for a governor out there because I think clearly we all know she wants to run for president in 2020. That's doing nothing for Massachusetts. On issues like sanctuary cities, which would basically harbor those who are here illegally committing crimes, she's for open borders and she's for sanctuary states. Um, it's no surprise that she wasn't there yesterday. I mean, there are good Democrats. There's two Democrats that have signed on to uh, Representative Lyons' bill uh, that would be petitioning this, uh, Colleen Gary of Dracut and uh, Rep. Jim Dwyer, a former probation officer from Woburn, who have supported this. So Democrats have signed on. We've got senators uh, who have signed on to this bill. It's time for a U.S. senator, perhaps, to actually champion what's good for the people, make sure that where immigration laws are, are respected. And by the way, that's the other thing. Judge Feely... Uh, said that part of his decision was based on the fact that the family would be, it would be, quote-unquote, catastrophic for the family if um, his, the, the, the drug dealer uh, was actually deported because he's an immigrant and he's committing crimes. It's catastrophic to the families who are losing children day in, day out. Um, you know, that's the thing. You, you had people speaking there yesterday at the event who relayed personally their account of having lost loved ones, and it's this dealer that's being put on the street, allowed to peddle. And, and in this case, as you probably have already told your audience, 40 bags of heroin caught in his car. You don't have 40 bags of heroin if you're just an off-and-on dealer. This guy is a career dealer, and the judge said, you know what, he needs to earn a living for his family. Let him go. That's what he did. Um, Jeff, we're pressed for time. I know you're very busy, but I want to ask you one final question. Are you going to make this a big issue in your campaign against Elizabeth Warren? Are you going to force her to denounce Judge Feely? Do you think she's vulnerable on this issue? Well, I mean, I, where is she? That's like you asked earlier. Where is she on this issue? It's, it, it's so critical. And, and that's why when you had hundreds of people showing up in Salem yesterday, uh, you know, that says a lot about the fact that the people of the state have had enough. 
So it, it is overdue for Elizabeth Warren to weigh in on uh, Judge Feely and what he's done. By the way, again, I will mention one more thing about this judge. He's the one that lowered the bail so that a criminal went up to Maine and then ultimately killed a police officer, okay? We have had police officers uh, in Massachusetts, um, you know, dying by people who are career criminals let out by uh, judges like this, these, these liberal, lenient judges. It's time for accountability in our courts. If Elizabeth Warren is not willing to call out uh, Judge Feely for what he's been doing over and over again, then what is she doing? What is she doing by uh, hiding out and going around the rest of the country fundraising for a presidential run in 2020? She's not serving the people of Massachusetts. Jeff, I want to thank you again for showing up yesterday. Uh, and honestly, you delivered a barn burner of a speech. Jeff Deal, to me... He's going to be the next senator for Massachusetts. Jeff, keep up the good fight, buddy. Jeff, thank you for what you did to organize Brittany. Awesome job. Um, she's from Salem. This hits her personally. we got to make sure that we get Tim uh, Feely off the bench, and I'm committed to doing that uh, along with everybody in Cooner Country. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, Jeff. Take care, buddy. You too. 617-266-6868. That's State Representative Jeff Deal. Uh, I think very likely he's going to be the Republican nominee to challenge Elizabeth Warren. And I'm telling you, he's going to give her a war. He's going to give her a political war like she's never seen. 617-266-6868. Okay. Your calls, I promise, next. Were you at the rally? What did you make of the rally? What do you make of the media's coverage of the rally? And Judge Feely, are his days on the bench now numbered? Your calls next. WRKO. 1249 here on the great WRKO. Okay, Brenda in Beverly. Brenda, how are you? <laughs> mess with Cooler Country, Jeff. <laughs> do they not know who we are? You know the expression, do you know who I am? No, you don't know who we are, and we're not going to let up on this. See, that's what they don't understand, and that's what they're so, like, baffled about, Jeff. They just witnessed something that has never happened before to them, because they've never been called out for the BS that goes on. Never, ever, ever. So they're, they're getting all rattled, and I absolutely love it. I was there last night, as you know, and I would say it was a great, I would qualify it as a great success, especially when you consider that it was a work day, the timing of it is at the end of a work day, and it's the start of a holiday. So with those factors, I thought it was fabulous. We had great energy. We were, as usual, uh, uh, clean and decent. And myself and another one of our Kuna Country uh, chickies, chiquitas as we call it, we cleaned up because we always clean up after a Kuna Country rally. There wasn't one little wrapper on that lawn that we were at. Okay, so I have one other thing to mention to you because I'm actually somewhere and I've picked up a Salem News, and if you could hear me, because you'll find this to be a real kick. Uh, the, the, uh, this is not today's news, this is yesterday. 13 arrested in, quote, major North Shore drug ring, and it ended with our fun and fabulous Attorney General, Mara Healy, and it's the usual dribble. Heroin, fentanyl, and OxyContin continues to cause hundreds of deadly overdoses across our state every week. Blah, 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 blah. My office is committed to working with our partners in law enforcement to disrupt the trafficking. And I'm doing this without my glasses, Jeff, so excuse me, I'm not reading it so forward, fluidly, to disrupt the trafficking networks that distribute these drugs onto our streets and into our communities. Yeah, what a bunch of baloney, Jeff. Huh? Uh, Where was she yesterday? Where was Mayor Driscoll yesterday? Where is all these people that we hear constantly lecturing to us about, we have to do something, we have a crisis, we need to act now, we have to blah, 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 blah. And you know what, when push comes to shove and you have an actual person that you can go after, they don't do it. Listen, wrong is wrong. If that person was my friend, I'd be over his house in a heartbeat saying, what the bleep are you doing? What the hell is going on? Brenda, great, great call. Great call. I'm, where was Maura Healy? She, you phony, you fraud, you. And that's what they do, all of them. Oh, this opiate crisis, it has to end, and we're going to disrupt these networks. And you're letting them back out on the streets. 
and we've got the judge cold, and you can't call him out? I said it yesterday, and I'm going to say it again. Every single one of these politicians who are unwilling to say Judge Feely should be removed from the bench and be impeached, you have no credibility on the heroin opiate epidemic. Period. Full stop. You're a phony. Period. End of story. Uh, let's go to Annie and Chelsea. Annie, thanks for holding and welcome. H- Hello? Annie! Hi, Jeff, I love you in a non-sexual <laughs> way. Great rally. You don't have to understand English to know that we meant business. <laughs> oh, Jeff, what, what a great... Oh, I had such a good time, really. I really did. No aches, no nothing, no pain. I was so wild up. Annie, I got to ask you, what did you... What did, did you see any of the media coverage of the rally? What did you make, A, of the rally, and B, how the media covered it? Well, I thought it could have been a little better. I mean, they didn't, they, like, like one of your callers said, they show, like, when the people, when we were just organizing. No, I know, at 4 showed, o'clock, when everybody yeah. really poured in at about 4.20, 4.25. Right, and, you know, I, and also I noticed that the, there were, I guess, people from the courthouse or office, the secretaries and all of them were looking out the windows, and some of them had cameras. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, no, uh, it, it was great. And I, you know, I heard something through the grapevine. The reason why Pocahontas, you know, the poster child for uh, Ancestry.com, <laughs> didn't attend the rally was she didn't get the smoke signal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that call, Annie. Tom in New Hampshire, you're up next. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, uh, Jeff. Hi. Um, hey, Tom. I, I didn't go to the rally, but um, I I just have to commend you for educating the public on on things that people in this country should know, like our history. Um, I want to say that uh, I don't want to go off topic too much, but I think. People should go back to church or Sunday schools so we know our Ten Commandments. I think uh, the Ten, I mean, the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Constitution should be taught in schools point by point so people know what this country is about. And that City Hall, uh, I mean, not the City Hall, but the Salem uh, rally yesterday reminds me of pre-revolutionary times when the people got out in the streets and defended their country. Uh, Tom, thank you very much for that call. Amen. Amen. Uh, look, and that's, I, I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again. That was the opening shot of a populist revolution. You're, and, and it's going to culminate. And it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the establishment is teetering. They're shaking. They're nervous because it is a great awakening. People are starting to wake up. And you know what's changing? We feel now we can do something about it. We feel impo- impo- we feel empowered. We feel emboldened. And now the peasants are not just lying down anymore and taking it. And now the liberal overlords that have been running this state for God knows how many decades, now they have a real opposition to contend with. And they don't know what to do. Denise in Beverly, you're up next. Go ahead, Denise. Hey. Denise, how are you? How are you, honey? I finally got the face with the voice, the great voice. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I I wish they showed more of you on the TV because you were unbelievable. Um, Channel 7, I think, did a good job, better than the other channels. Um, But um, I have to tell you, I was was talking to one of the lawyers on the other, on Sealy's side, because I was upset with them being standing out there. And um, there was a heavy lady with them, and... um, and he was trying to tell me why Feely did it, and he has his reasons. And I said, what, he might have gave state evidence? And he said, well, yeah, that could be. I said, but still, he should, even if he did give state evidence, he should have did some time. I don't care if he, if he got five years, he should have done three or something. I said, that guy should have done some time. And then the lady was going on yelling at me, and I tapped her stomach to get her attention. And she goes, don't touch me. Don't touch me like she tried to get me arrested. <laughs> oh, my God, it was awful. But, um, yeah, that was a great time, and I enjoyed it. And, um, 
You were great. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, and thank you for showing up and for all your support. It means everything to me. Thank you yeah, so much, well, Denise. God bless well. you. Take care. No, look, I don't care what the reason is. You see, now they're trying. They're, they're furiously now trying to defend him. Look, I don't care what the reason is. You do not allow a notorious, he's a notorious convicted drug dealer, a heroin dealer, free on the streets. But more than that, this is what they don't get. He praised them. I said this to Brittany. I go, honestly, if he had half a brain, that's why I suspect there's corruption here. If he had half a brain, let him loose. Like, just, just let him loose. Just, okay, n- nothing. Not a day in prison. Bang. But, you know, the gavel, hit the gavel, that's it, it's over. But no, he had to give a speech. He had to praise him. He had to say what a great family man he is, what a great businessman he is, how he's doing this for the best interests of his family. That's what I'm starting to think. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where Was money changed here? You're almost like giving him the kiss of approval, like a seal of legitimacy. Like, it's not enough just to let me go. No, 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 no. You got to let everybody know I'm a great guy. That, to me, is the most damning thing. That, above everything else, is what's the least defendable, defensible about this. So, if the liberals want to defend the indefensible, be my guest. I'm telling you, this issue now for them is a cancer. It's going to spread and spread and spread. They got to make a decision when they want to excise it. Keep defending him, believe me, because you're defending the devil. John in Tewksbury. Ah, I'm up against that. John, hold on. I'm going to continue to take your calls, I promise. 617-266-6868. Okay, my friends. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe the news team is starting to enjoy the Memorial Day weekend a little bit early. But here it is, your sports update. Pedroia is back. Hanley Ramirez is out for the Boston Red Sox. WRKO's Bill Trefiro has the latest from the newsroom. Take it away, Bill.